Hi, I'm Will Granger, uh, and today we'll be looking at two companies, uh, the Lotteries Corporation and Tabcorp, both of which sit within the casinos and gaming sector. Back when we first purchased Tabcorp, the business operated two divisions of varying quality, uh, a lotteries business and a wagering business. And it was really the high quality nature of this lotteries division that first attracted us to the idea. Uh, that lotteries business has now been demerged into its own separate entity, the Lotteries Corporation, uh, which has been a catalyst for value realization. We think the Lotteries Corporation is one of the strongest businesses listed on the ASX. It's got a stellar track record, having grown earnings at a 9% compound annual growth rate over the last decade, whilst deploying very little incremental capital. Uh, the business has another, a number of infrastructure-like qualities, uh, product demand that's insensitive to economic cycles, uh, long dated exclusive licenses and very strong pricing power, all of which combine to create very dependable and predictable cash flows for shareholders. One feature that distinguishes the business is that it's far less capital intensive than its infrastructure peers. In fact, we estimate that the Lotteries Corporation generates a return on tangible capital well north of 50%, making it a materially better than market business on a returns basis. Now the key risk for any concession operator is whether or not licenses can be renewed on attractive terms. And here there are some interesting quirks of the lotteries industry that heavily favor the incumbent during the bidding process. For one, the Lotteries Corporation are the only operator of scale in Australia. They hold all state licenses bar Western Australia. This allows the business to spread its fixed costs across multiple licenses, in turn allowing the business to operate each individual license more profitably than any would be competitor. If they can operate the license more profitably, then they can also afford to bid more for that license during the renewal process. The other important consideration is license continuity. State governments generate a material amount of tax revenue based on a percentage of lottery sales. Lottery sales accounted for over $5 billion of tax revenue over just the last three years. Uh, compare that to the Lottery Corporation's own profits of less than a billion dollars over that same period. Now there's a lot of risk for the state governments in switching operator as that can result in a decline in lottery sales and thus a decline in tax revenue. Given that the profit pool for the operator is five times smaller than the tax revenue generated from lottery sales, the state governments are clearly very incentivized to try and maximize turnover rather than try and squeeze some extra margin by switching operator. So we clearly like this lotteries business and we thought at the time of purchase, if you applied a fair multiple to the lotteries division, you essentially got the rest of the Tabcorp business for free. We've been happy with the share price performance of both vehicles post demerger. Interestingly though, uh, the Tabcorp entity, which is where the wagering, media and gaming services businesses are held, is where we're starting to see some value emerge. The lion's share of value here comes from the wagering business, which under the TAB brand holds the exclusive license to conduct wagering operations in retail venues across Australia. Now as compensation for that retail exclusivity, Tabcorp pay higher product fees and taxes than online bookmakers such as Sportsbet. However, as punters increasingly elect to bet through digital channels rather than retail venues, these higher fees and taxes have become a material cost disadvantage for Tabcorp. What's interesting for Tabcorp is that in just the few weeks since the demerger has taken place, management have already made significant headway in reducing this cost disadvantage. They've renegotiated the Queensland licence, resulting in a decrease in the effective tax rate from 44.5% to 35% in line with peers. Had this taken place in 2021, that would have resulted in a $30 million increase in profits for Tabcorp. New South Wales have also announced an increase in the point of consumption tax from 10% to 15% as well as their intention to review the current wagering tax regime over the coming years. So both these developments are very positive uh, steps forward for Tabcorp in leveling the playing field between themselves and online bookmakers. It's also worth mentioning that there have been material on market share purchases from Tabcorp management. Now, whilst insider buying is never the foundation for a thesis, it is nonetheless an important signal, particularly for a situation like Tabcorp, where you have a business that's facing material structural headwinds navigation of which will require strong management execution. So whilst the road ahead for Tabcorp is a bumpy one, uh, we're seeing some very positive early signs, which are getting us excited. Inflation is certainly very topical at the moment, um, but importantly, we think both the Lotteries Corporation and Tabcorp 
uh, should be well positioned. There are really two important factors to consider during inflation, uh, and that is pricing power, i.e. how easily a business can pass on increases in its cost base to customers without a drop in demand, uh, as well as the, cap the return on capital that a business generates. Now that first concept is generally pretty well understood, but the second concept, return on capital, doesn't garner nearly as much attention during discussions of inflation. And that's despite the fact that it's likely the far more important factor over time. Why is that? Well, for the average business to grow its profits in line with inflation, i.e. a nominal increase in profits, a business must invest in both working capital and fixed assets. In other words, just for a business to maintain its real earnings power, again, adjusted for inflation, more capital is required to be put into the business to the detriment of shareholders. Now, this also hurts the high return on capital business, but just to a lesser extent, given its lower capital requirements. So we think that both Tabcorp and the Lotteries Corporation should be well positioned because they really check both those boxes. They're both very capital light businesses with resilient revenues that should be able to grow in line with cost inflation.